So it's been about a month since the release of the Quest 3, and during this time I've been using it almost every day for both standalone and PC VR gaming, and I feel like I've learned a lot about this headset. In this video I'll be giving you my essential tips and tricks to get the most out of your Quest 3, while also addressing two of the headset's biggest issues, the battery life and its built-in microphone. But first, let me start with one of my favourite tips. Now, we all know that the Quest 3 is capable of running VR games at a higher resolution and a higher frame rate compared to the Quest 2. However, this relies on games being optimised for the Quest 3 by the game's developers. We've seen some incredible Quest 3 enhanced games like Red Matter 2, Into the Radius and Population 1 that really showcase what this headset is capable of. The problem is, there's tons of great Quest games out there that haven't yet had this treatment, and that's where this nifty bit of software comes in called the Quest Games Optimizer. This application allows you to run pre-made optimized profiles to max out the resolution and frame rate of your favorite VR games. For example, when launching Beat Saber through the Quest Games Optimizer menu, it automatically applies a 154% increase in resolution, which makes the game look stunning. What's really cool is that if there isn't a profile available for your favourite VR game, you can actually tweak the settings to create one yourself and submit it to the developers to approve and share with the community. I have to say, I was super sceptical about this application at first, but after seeing the results for myself, I was completely blown away. I created my own profile for the brand new Power Wash Simulator, which hasn't been optimised for the Quest 3 yet, and I couldn't believe the difference in visual quality. I do have some caveats to my recommendation though. Firstly, increasing the headset's performance will likely affect battery life, which is already a problem with the Quest 3, and I'll go into this in more detail later on in the video. Secondly, you need to have a developer account as you need to sideload this tool using SideQuest, which also means you do need to have access to a PC. And also, you do need to enable ADB via Wi-Fi each time you restart your headset to make full use of this tool. Now, I'm not going to lie, setting it up does take some work, but honestly, the results are well worth the effort, in my opinion. If you're interested, the Quest Games Optimizer tool is available to buy on itch.io for around 12 US dollars, 10 British pounds, and I've added a link to it along with the installation guide in the description below. So now that you've got your games looking great, here's a tip on how you can get your games a little cheaper and possibly even earn yourself some Quest Store credit. You see, Meta run an app referral program, so you can refer games that you've purchased to friends and family, and they'll get a 25% discount on the game, as long as it's not on sale. If they purchase the game using your referral link, you'll get $5 or £4 in in-store credit added to your account, and this can be used towards buying some more VR games. This is why you always see people pushing their referral links in game reviews on the MetaQuest store. To share your own referral link, you just need to go into the MetaQuest mobile app, select the game, and you'll find the referral button. If you want to find referral links to get 25% off a game, or you want to share your own referral links, there's a dedicated subreddit for that where you can find everything you need, which I've added in the description below. Meta also run a referral program for headsets too, so if someone uses your referral link, you'll both get $30 or £23 in Quest Store credit. So if you know someone that's about to buy a game or a Quest 3 headset, make sure that they use your link so you can both benefit from it. My next tip is that if you're looking for an incredible first person shooter on Quest, look no further than Pavlov, the sponsors of this video. Pavlov Shack has been available for free on the Quest for the past three years, but it's finally making the jump to the main Quest store on Tuesday the 14th of November. It will be a paid app moving forward, but if you pre-order the game ahead of release, you'll get five exclusive weapon skins, along with a 25% discount, making the game just $14.99 in US dollars, $10.99 in British pounds. Pavlov features a ton of fun and frantic game modes, such as Search and Destroy, Team Deathmatch, Zombies, Gun Game, Hide, and TTT. This main Quest Store release features three new maps and even has mod support. Pavlov offers a lot of replay value and in my opinion, it's a must own title if you're into VR shooters. Also to celebrate the game's launch on the main Quest Store, the developers have given me a Quest 3 headset and a ProTube mag stock to give away to one of you lucky viewers. To enter the giveaway, all you need to do is check out the link 
in the description below. So moving on, let's talk about the Quest 3's built-in microphone, because quite frankly, it sucks. Because this is what the Quest 3's built-in microphone sounds like. How Meta allowed this microphone to ship as a company focused on creating the metaverse and pushing social VR is beyond me. It's actually worse than both the Quest 2 and Quest Pro. Have a little listen and let me know what you think. This is what the Quest 2's microphone sounds like. This is what the Quest Pro's microphone sounds like. And for comparison, this is what the Quest 3's built-in microphone sounds like. I've tested out a bunch of potential fixes, but unfortunately, there's not really much you can do about the microphone right now. Adding tape or a pop filter doesn't improve the plosives or the mic picking up your breath as it's located behind the front faceplate. Some clever Redditors have been able to add an EQ to the mic when used as a PC VR headset, which does seem to improve the quality, so I'm hopeful Meta, who are aware of the issue, can fix it in a future software update. The next tip is if you happen to buy a VR game or experience from the Quest Store, but for whatever reason you're just not happy with your purchase, you can easily request a full refund for games using the MetaQuest mobile app. The only requirements are that you've played the game for less than two hours and it's within 14 days of the original purchase. Just simply go into the settings in the MetaQuest app, purchase history, click on the game and select refund. It really is that simple. This next tip is really useful, especially when demoing the Quest 3 to friends and family. The headset casting has been made much easier with the MetaQuest mobile app, as now you can remotely activate the headset's casting feature so you can see exactly what the player is seeing right on your mobile phone. To activate this casting feature, just open the MetaQuest mobile app and you'll see the option at the top of the screen next to your headset. Whilst casting, if you tap on the screen of your mobile phone, you'll also have the options to remotely launch games, recenter the headset, reset the Guardian, and even start recording a gameplay clip. You just have to make sure that your phone and your headset are on the same home Wi-Fi network. Moving on, one of the interesting new features of the Quest 3 is of course the new color pass-through mode. And while I'm not completely sold on mixed reality gaming, I do find the color pass-through really useful as a default home environment. But a quick tip is that you can activate the pass-through mode at any time whilst playing by simply tapping twice on the side of the headset. I find this feature really useful if you need to grab a quick drink, check a message on your phone, or if a family member wants to talk to you quickly. You can easily enable this by simply going into the Quest 3 menu, going into settings, physical space, pass-through, and selecting the toggle for double tap for pass-through. This next tip is to help keep you safe whilst playing in VR. The MetaQuest boundary system does a pretty decent job, but personally I prefer to use something on the floor along with the boundary system so that I know I'm centered in my play space at all times just by feeling the texture underneath my feet. Now you can buy a product like this proxy mat that I have here, or you could simply use a small rug or a piece of carpet. The idea is that you set up the mat or the piece of carpet in the center of your play space so when you're on the mat or carpet, you can punch out in all directions without hitting anything. Using something like this gives me confidence when playing intensive games like Underdogs, for example, so I can swing out these punches without fear of hitting my walls. This can also be really useful if you're a content creator like me, as I know when I'm standing on the mat that I'm centered in frame on my camera. And finally, let's talk about the battery life. Many people, including myself, are finding that they're barely getting one and a half to two hours worth of VR gaming before the Quest 3 battery is completely dead. Personally, I recommend investing in a battery strap like the Bobo VR M3 Pro that I showed in my recent accessories video. This will increase your battery life to around two and a half hours worth of gaming, but there is something you can do to get this battery life for free. If you have update version 59 or later installed on your headset, there's an option in the settings menu that can be found under general and power called battery saver mode. When battery saver mode is activated, this reduces the frame rate of the Quest 3 from 90 frames per second to 72 frames per second. It also applies fixed foveated rendering and lowers the headset brightness to 50%. In my testing, playing a variety of VR games using this battery saver mode, it gave me exactly two hours, 20 minutes of playtime. Now, obviously this isn't a massive increase in playtime, but if you're just watching a movie, for example, where the frame rate isn't that important, then you can stretch out the battery life a little bit further with this battery saver mode. 
So they're my top tips and tricks for the MetaQuest 3. Please let me know what you all think in the comments down below. Maybe you learned something new in this video, or maybe you have a tip that you want to share with the community. Please let me know in the comments down below. Leave a cheeky little like if you found this video useful. Make sure you're subscribed, of course, for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you all on the next one. Cheers.